Welcome to MHM Podcast Network on moviehousememories.com. Podcast for pod people. Our feature presentation begins now. Welcome to Movie House Concessions on the MHN Podcast Network, where each episode we pull a random film from the display case to see if it tastes as fresh as the day it was released. I'm Patrick. And I'm Chris. And this month we continue our cycling and review of all the Kevin Smith films, and we're on to his third film from 1997, Chasing Amy. And it's the third exciting installment of the New Jersey Trilogy. Should we, Correct. Should we include that part? Of, of course. The New Jersey trilogy that's gone on to like 11 films now. <laughs> all right. And also a film that Chris has placed into his top 100 films of all time previously. Spoiler. Yeah, spoiler. Uh, but before we get into our review of this film, uh, Chris, do you have a brief summary for us? Yes. And just as an FYI, I will be dressed as a Nubian for this summary don't ask what it is patrick all right we've got comic book artists and bffs holden mcneil and banky edwards um, who are promoting their book blunt man and chronic at a comic book convention in the big apple that's new york city patrick i got it there they meet Alyssa jones She's another comic book artist, and she looks a lot like that chick from Mallrats, but probably just a coincidence. Uh, Holden has the hots for for Alyssa, but unfortunately for him, she's a lesbian, and she immediately friend zones the dude. Holden eventually tells Alyssa that she's in that he's in love with her, and it kind of pisses her off, wouldn't you say, Patrick? Yes. But she eventually calms down, and the two start dating. This relationship makes Banky jealous. Or maybe he's got a thing against lesbians, I don't know. But he's he's not happy. And so he does his best to sabotage this little relationship uh, by digging up some dirt on Alyssa. I couldn't imagine what that would be, though. Oh, yes, we can imagine. Uh, she had a threesome in high school where she um, had sex with two guys, and uh, she has a special nickname. Would you Do you remember what that nickname is, Patrick? Finger cuffs. Finger cuffs. And this bothers Holden, ruins his little uh, fantasy that, he's, that he has pulled a woman from the dark side, Patrick, um, and because he thought he was the only man she's ever slept with. It's all downhill from there, Alyssa. Uh, this, revelation, this revelation leads to a really big blow up between the two. Huge. Uh, after which uh, Holden has lunch with Jay and Silent Bob. Silent Bob inspires him with his own Chasing Amy story, you know, and how he screwed it up and decided to stick it out and how he's always chasing this girl and he's not very silent as a Bob in this one. So... Holden decides to stick it out, suck it up, whatever he's doing, something. He invites Alyssa and Banky to his place where he tells Alyssa that he still wants to be her boyfriend. And he then tells Banky that he knows Banky's in love with him because our Nubian little friend has given him some bad information. A little, a man named Hooper who knows a thing or two possibly about gay relationships. So Holden decides that the only way to set everything straight is for the three of them to have a love fest of their own legs everywhere. Uh, both Banky and Alyssa end their respective relationships with Holden, much to Banky's uh, um, relief, I guess you could say, because he was going to go through with it. I don't know what that says for Banky. Maybe he's a good friend. 
So after they severed their relationships with him, a uh, year passes, and we're back in the Big Apple, Patrick, where we see Banky, Holden, and Alyssa promoting their own books at, at that same comic book convention, I'm assuming. Um, Banky and Holden share a tender little moment where Banky then nods Holden to go pay a visit to Alyssa. And after a brief conversation... Um, Holden gives her a copy of his new book based on their failed relationship titled Chasing Amy and Amy's new friend, or I guess I should say Alyssa's new girlfriend says, who's that? And uh, Alyssa just says some guy I used to know and tosses his book to the side for happy ending, the end. Oh, by the way, Ben Affleck's uh, brother is in the film named Little Kid. Yeah. Oh, and PSPS. Matt Damon is in the film as an executive. Correct. There's two Academy Award winners in this film. Ben Affleck and Casey Affleck. How has Matt Damon not had had one? I'm kind of surprised. He's been nominated. He hasn't he hasn't won. Oh. So Jason get one. Lee. Actually, I take that back. Three Academy Award. He did win for writing Goodwill Hunting. Okay. But not and and Affleck won for directing and for writing Goodwill Hunting as well. But all right, uh, chasing Amy, Amy. The numbers on this film released on April fourth, nineteen ninety seven, the same day as The Saint uh, with Val Kilmer, That Old Feeling with Bette Midler, and Inventing the Abbots with Jennifer Connelly. Uh, it's released the same month as Gross Point Blank, Murder at sixteen hundred. Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag, Anaconda, and Chris's all-time favorite film, McHale's Navy with Tom Arnold. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, I have, that is like the thing furthest from my brain. That's got to be up there with one of them earnest films. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think it's a little bit better than the, most of those earnest films. But All right. Made on a budget of a quarter of a million dollars, ultimately grossed just over $12 million at the box office, making it the 110th highest grossing film of 1997, right behind such films as Rosewood, Gattaca, and L Love Jones, and right in front of Turbulent, Turbulence, The Beautician and the Beast, and Double Team. Uh, won two Independent Spirit Awards. Uh, Jason Lee won for Best Supporting Male, and Kevin Smith won for Best Screenplay. Uh, this is actually the seventh highest grossing film of uh, Kevin Smith's career. At the time of its release, it was the highest grossing film of his career by a lot. It was uh, made four times as much as Clerks did, which was the highest of the three, um, and did not cost a lot to make. It was made very much on the cheap and actually looks that way. Uh, and, uh, the, you know, that this was that, okay, a Kevin Smith film could make uh, some money here. And that's where suddenly I think he became a much more bankable director and rotten tomatoes has it at 87% critics and 83% audience. And that is the numbers on chasing Amy. So, all right, Chris, a third film in the series. Mm -hmm. We reviewed this film previously over on movie house memories many, many years ago. Uh, it was a film you nominated for one of your top 100 films of all time. Um, I, I, I'm on record already as saying, I like this, this film a lot. Uh, so it, there's not much that we're going to surprise anyone, anybody who's listened to our podcast before with our personal opinions about this film. But just to recap, you put it in your top 100. Yeah. What speaks to you about this film? You know, I think I mentioned this in the, the original review of this was that I think it just came out at the right time. Um, you know, we were in our mid twenties and, uh, relationships don't really go well when you're still figuring it the F out. And, um, there's a lot of cringe in Holden's character. Um, maybe that's what I identified with. I don't know, but, um, I think I just saw it at the right time and I enjoyed it immensely and it still holds up. I think now today it's more nostalgia related. Um, because, you know, as you mentioned, it's not necessarily the highest quality of direct of filmmaking, you know, but, uh, it's, it's a great film. I think it, it speaks to, 
a time in the 90s that that's gone by and maybe parts of it are relevant today but a lot of it is still is is just a product of it that era you know it's weird that you mentioned that it's like as far as you know how relationships go that uh, i was coming out of a relationship at the time when this film came out um that i was probably pretty emotionally raw this film snuck out on me, you know, like I was very aware of mall rats coming out and I mm-hmm. loved works. I didn't even know he'd made another film and a mutual friend of ours, Mike Maxim, um, actually called me and said, Hey, you want to go see the new Kevin Smith film? And I'm like, I didn't even know he made another one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we, uh, we went to go see it and, you know, I was thinking, wow, he's, He's very much, uh, you know, grown up as a director because this is not Clerks. This is not Mallrats. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Jay and Silent Bob show up in the third act very, very briefly. And I went, oh, OK, he's only gone yeah. so far. But, yeah. They're still drug dealers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I, you know, and but I, I thought, wow, you know, this is I, I think what you said, it does speak to, it did speak to me at a certain point in time in my life that I could very, 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 very much relate to the same way that I could relate to clerks in the time it was released. Cause I was working in a video store at the same time, uh, that it, it, you know, it was like this, this director gets me and I'm, I'm heavily on creative dialogue. And I, I always think Kevin Smith films have good dialogue. It's something I could relate to. And, and something to mention is, I think Kevin is maybe just a couple years older than us. So, you know, it, it helps with the relatability. He is a Gen Xer, uh, very much like we are. Yeah, I believe he was born in 71. Um, oh, then he's, yeah. yeah. He's right there with us. We're right. like a year older than us. So. All right. Well, it, it very much uh, has a, a group of actors uh, on the way up, or some actors on the way up. Ben Affleck playing the lead of Holden. Uh, what did you think of uh, Ben Affleck's performance in this film? Well, I, I kind of mentioned already cringe. I mean, he, he's believable as this cringy guy. Uh, I think that his uh, chemistry between him, Jason Lee, and Joey Lauren Adams was great. I'm debating on if I like him better as a bad guy in Mallrats than as the main uh, lead in this one. Um I don't know what you think about it, but I enjoyed Ben Affleck in this. And this is probably, you know, him in these uh, Kevin Smith films are probably what I know him best as from this time. I'm trying to think of what I would have seen before because I'm not a big fan of what was him and Matt Damon's breakout. Goodwill hunting. Goodwill hunting. I'm not a big fan of that. So I think I saw that just once. And... I'd have to look at his videography, but I think I know him from this time, basically from Kevin Smith films. Well, I think Goodwill Hunting doesn't come out until eight months after this. Okay. Uh, so uh, you probably didn't see that before you saw this film. Um, I knew Ben Affleck for from obviously Mallrats. I remembered him from that. I remembered him in Dazed and Confused and School Ties. Uh, so, but... Uh, once again, kind of always playing the heavy and very much the supporting role. So what was I, he I, dazed I, and confused. He, uh, he's, he's one of the uh, older kids uh, who goes out uh, going to whoop, do a whooping on all the junior high kids coming in as freshmen. And, and <laughs> okay. he's the one that runs up to the house and someone, uh, one of the parents, I can't remember if it's the mother or the father pulls a shotgun on him and put points it in his face at the early part of the film. So, okay. but, he has curlier hair in that at, at that point in time. But, yeah, he's in Dazed and Confused. So, but, I, I mean, I, I think he does an adequate role. I, I, I don't think the acting is the strength of this film. I think mm-hmm. the, the writing is. Um, the relatability uh, to me is what uh, I like about this film. Uh, he, I, I, don't, I, I don't see a lot of range uh, from him, although I think he was very good in the car scene uh, mm-hmm. when he confesses his love, I thought he did a good job there. Uh, I, and I thought he he has some great chemistry with Jason Lee. He's okay with Joey Lauren Adams, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I I you know he's he, he's not he, he's not ex- anything exceptional 
to me in this film. He he does a good good job, an adequate job, fills mm-hmm. the role. But I, I I've seen him do much better acting in films much later in his career. When you saw this film, would you at any point have thought that in the future he would be playing Batman? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No. Uh, no, I, but, I mean, if you had asked me, hey, do you think Mr. Mom's going to play Batman? I would have told you no way Michael Keaton's playing Batman as well. So, that, so. Yeah, uh, that he would play Batman again in, when did that film come out? 2022? 2023? Uh, 2023, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and... <laughs> And, and neither Val Kilmer nor G- George Clooney, what I've said, I, I, I guess I could never sit there and say, I know who played Batman. You know, yeah. it's just nobody who's ever played Batman is somebody I would have predicted. So yeah. Val Kilmer but from I, real genius to <laughs> Batman. Yeah. But I will say I, his Batman is one of the versions I like best. I think he did a good job as Batman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't necessarily think he's good as Bruce Wayne, but I thought he did a good job as Batman. <laughs> All right. What about Jason Lee playing Banky? I like Jason Lee the best in this film. I, I don't know if it's, you know, just the nature of his character can just do whatever the heck he wants. Um, you know, he's a paranoid kind of guy. He's a jealous kind of guy. I guess you could say he's a little um, um, not racist. Um <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for? Sexist? Sexist, yeah. Maybe he's racist too, I don't know. But he has a black friend in the film, so I don't think he can be racist. Yeah, a black gay friend, you know. And there but, you go. I mean, uh, I'm assuming you watched the same deleted scenes that I did on our Criterion, because we're going to also review this for Criterion as well, that the whole conversation of, him being somewhat homophobic in the use of his, the language he uses the, with Joey Lauren Adams has that conversation with Holden. Uh, <laughs> it was like, okay, I can see why you took it out because <laughs> it's not necessarily funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and it kind of slows down the pace of the film, but you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. That that's the risk on some of those little monologues. Yeah. Um, I agree with you. Jason Lee was the highlight of the film is, is, is much, I mean, as much as he's not really exceptionally different, uh, as far as character wise than his character in mall rats, he doesn't seem to be yelling nearly as much. <laughs> That's <laughs> a plus. <laughs> and, 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 you know, he's, he's matured as an actor and there's, there's different volumes that he has conversations that, that, you know, he can, he can emote without just yelling and that's that was my frustration with him and mall rats is just everything has to be at high volume and just screaming at people uh no matter what and in this film he doesn't do that he also has the benefit of some of the best lines in the entire film you mm-hmm. know including the figment of your fucking imagination which is still one of the funniest scenes in the film um does did Kevin Smith basically live vicariously through the Jason Lee's character? Is that basically why he has the best lines? I mean, I, I, and I've, you know, I've listened to Kevin Smith many times on his podcast and it very much is that it, it is common for him to characters are written with the idea that that's who he is. Um, and, you know, like Randall in clerks is very much the Kevin Smith character mm-hmm. and, you know, he that's even though there's elements of Dante that uh, are part of his personality that, you know, at one point he was going to play Randall and then decided not to play Randall. Uh, but, you know, that it, it, he'll it, he doesn't write it as like it, he or he doesn't say it as the, uh, the idea of like, oh, this is, uh, you know, this uh, this character is me. He wrote, you know, like I gave that character the best lines because I planned on playing it. I don't think he ever planned on playing the role in this film. Um, but I, I think that Jason Lee is somebody is, is an element of a, a, a muse for him that, um, he, that he can, uh, very much see the character, the, how the character, that actor is going to play, deliver those lines. Mm-hmm. And I think he has confidence in him as he very much as, you know, as the rest of his career uh, plays on that, he brings back Jason Lee all the time. 
What about Joey Lauren Adams uh, playing Alyssa Jones? I like her. Um, she she doesn't really do much nowadays, does she? She hasn't branched out into more roles in today's world. Do you know? No, I mean she she's never she never really made it big. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and part of it is I think that you know her her voice just did not taking you know, is something about doing scream serious actress. Mm-hmm. I mean, she had a few films also in dazed and confused as well. Um, although I don't know if she ever shared a scene with Ben Affleck, uh, but you know, she's, I, I think she's still out there acting. I've seen her from time to time. God, what is, Oh, I think she was in Jay and silent Bob reboot. I think that's where I saw her m- most recently. Um, I've heard, some rumors that she's part of his plan for the the sequel to Mall Rats, um, that she was one of the actor actors who was going to be coming back for that. Uh, but you know, no, I mean, she never made it big. She, you know, she uh, shortly after this, I think she did Big Daddy uh, with um, Adam Sandler, and I think that was probably the 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 highlight of her career. I uh-huh. mean, as far as box office. Yeah. I mean, she's a, she's a great supporting character, like the main character's best friend or something. Um, but I think she, she made it work in this one. I think she was believable and I did enjoy her performance. She, I think it's just easier to play off Jason Lee in general, but I liked her chemistry with Jason Lee a little bit more than Ben Affleck in this. I agree with you. I thought she had a great chemistry with also once again with Jason Lee, um, which would have made a great storyline for like a love triangle if you wanted to do that, because I could, I could see where those characters could kind of give and take. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, she, she's okay. Okay. Once again, similar to Ben Affleck, I'm not, she's okay. She fits the role. Um, it was obviously kind of a ballsy role to play. She has some of the better emotional scenes and uh, some of the better dialogue as far as like the dramatic stuff, she doesn't have the funny lines, but the, the scenes out, you know, like when Holden makes his threesome proposal um, and, and outside the hockey rink, those two particular scenes uh, stand out to me where, I mean, she's very, very much emotionally raw. I guess it, the rain scene as well. I mean, mm-hmm. she, she that as well, the, the response to Holden, but yeah, I mean, she, she has probably the best emotional scenes to, to, to play out and she does a good job at it. It's just, it, it, you know, <clears throat> I just don't see her as an exceptional actor. She's not bad. I, I like her in it. Uh, but it's at the end of the day, it's, you know, there's an aspect of like, I, I never understand why these two characters, why he falls so deeply in love with her so quickly, mm-hmm. if you will. And she wrote and sang that song in the film? Oh, she sang it. I don't know if she wrote it. Oh, I could be making that up. You know how I get it. She might have. I don't don't know. All right. Uh, Well, uh, this is a Kevin Smith film, and we have a little bit of Kevin Smith in it, giving uh, (laughs) the explanation of the title, uh, Chasing Amy. Um, what did you think of uh, Jay and Silent Bob, Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith making their appearance in the third act of the film and giving an explanation of what the title even the fuck means? You know, I know they're uh, a team, Jay and Silent Bob, but <laughs> Jay didn't really need to be in this one. Um, I, I guess it, you know, it ne- you need it because they're, they're a team, but uh I was least impressed. They they didn't need to be in this film, as as far as I'm concerned. They I think they were used in the films that we've watched so far. I think they were used the best in Mallrats. Uh, Clerks a close second, but this one, um, yeah, I I guess I guess his, um, Silent Bob being the the voice of reason in this one, it could have been done by somebody else. I guess you can't get Stan Lee again. <laughs> well, I agree with you that this film didn't need them, and they were seemed to be a little tacked on. 
Now, I remember at the time that he made an explanation that uh, Jay and Silent Bob are his R2-D2 and C-3PO of his films, that they – you know, that they're going to be there. They, they're they not going to be the main characters, which apparently forgot all the fuck about that two movies later when he made it all about them. Um, and, <laughs> but, you know, they, they could have not been in this film and it would have been just as good. You could have written it for someone else. Um, and, you know, uh, the fact that he's the one who gives that explanation and that roundabout way of, you know, explaining the title. <laughs> it's just, it's like, okay, just because you had a little story doesn't give the, the title a lot more depth, you know, it's just whatever, but, oh, well, yeah, they, they were okay. That's, that's all I could say is they were fine in it for what they did. They didn't, they didn't really screw it, screwed up that much. Um, I, it seemed like, once again, seemed like Kevin Smith was growing up a little bit, uh, because even they, he was making fun of some of the lines the characters were saying in the comic book and had said in Mallrats. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is kind of like you know the kid you know dialogue and stuff. Uh, unfortunately, he pretty much abandons that two films later when it gets utterly ridiculous with the Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. But oh well, we, we'll get to that one eventually. <laughs> All right. Well, we've already reviewed this once before. We're rehashing and saying the same things again. Uh, so let's ultimately, uh, where do we come down on chasing Amy? Uh, you know, as I said, you've already articulated before one of your top 100 films of all time. Is it still there? I mean, just out of curiosity. You know, I'm not sure because as I get older, Holden's character becomes a little more cringe for me as the years pass. And as I get older, I have more nostalgia value for mall rats. Uh, I put them very close together now. I think that if I'm going to keep chasing Amy in my top 100, I have to put mall rats in my top 100 as well. And I don't know if I'm prepared to do both of them. <laughs> uh, out, out of one to five stars, would is this near a five star for you? I think it's a four and a half. I, I it's you know it's got its flaws, but it's still a film that I enjoy. And, um, yeah, it just speaks to me of a time gone by when the sun was brighter and the birds chirped louder and, uh, there was an extra spring in my step. All right. Uh, I like this film a lot. Um, it, it, it spoke to me at a time in my life. It no longer speaks to me in this point in my life, uh, other than to the, for nostalgia purposes, um, I, I see with glaring obviousness the technical uh, lack, the lack of technical skills by Kevin Smith. It's very much I'm going to put a camera on a tripod and just film people talking. That there's no movement to his camera. He he wasn't really progressing as as a, a director at this time. Granted, he was also making this ex- exceptionally cheap as well. Uh, two hundred fifty thousand is that what you said? Two hundred fifty thousand which after the failure of, of mall rats, it was, you know, he was, he wanted to kind of get back to his roots. They, the studio was willing to give him more money if he would cast, I think it was John Stewart and David Schwimmer. And I can't remember who the girl was. I could not uh, imagine John Stewart, but I think they were going with Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. That's right. It was Drew Barrymore. Thank you very much. Uh, and so post scream and he, yeah, he wanted, to make it with, he wrote it for these three actors. He wanted these three actors and was willing to make it for a lot less money to do it. So and I'm glad he did uh, because I think he maintained a lot of control over it because there was nothing to lose because they didn't spend that much money on it. But mm-hmm. ultimately I, I don't think the film ages that well. I don't, uh, to, to me, I still like the film. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it is not, as a treasure gem as it was in 1997 when it first came out. So ultimately I give it, I'll I'll go four stars. I Mm -hmm. still like it a lot, but it has tremendous flaws and most of them are technical issues. And I'm assuming that of the three we reviewed so far, clerks is still by far your number one. Yeah. I would still put clerks number one. This would be a close second to clerks Mm -hmm. Uh, clerks, uh, you know, clerks still, cracks me up clerks i've seen more often than any other kevin smith film and it's still relatable to me on on many different levels 
Well, that's our review for Chasing Amy. Please let us know what you think of the film in the comment section. And for our listeners over on MovieHouseMemories.com, please rate it from one to five stars on that page as well. If you've enjoyed today's review, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the MHM Podcast Network, where we have many, many more film reviews from yesterday, today, and beyond. Until next time, uh, I'm Patrick. And I'm the Nubian. And this concession stand is now closed. This podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. The theme song for Movie House Concessions, Rock on Brada, is brought to you by Marwan Nimra at netentine.com under a Creative Commons Attribution 4 panel license. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Movie House Concessions, the MHM Podcast Network, and Fuzzy Bunny Slippers Entertainment LLC, unless otherwise noted.